All right, guys, and we're back. Let's see what's happening in the markets today. We have quite a few headlines, so get ready, get your pens ready, and let's get started. The U.S. Congress confirms Joe Biden as the U.S. elect president. Donald Trump gets his Instagram and Twitter accounts blocked for the first time in the history, guys, after a harsh comment uh, and promises a smooth transition a day after his supporters uh, trashed the Capitol, engaging with the security forces. Crude oil consolidates about $50 uh, once again. Gold uh, price uh, drops $20 in the last trading session, guys. Bitcoin is skyrocketing, trading about $38,000 today. And tomorrow, we have the first non-farm payroll of 2021. What a rally for Bitcoin, guys. What a rally. Right. All right, guys. Then we are back for the first time this year from the heart of London with Neil Wilson. Neil, good afternoon. How are you, man? Happy New Hi, Year. Andrew. Yeah, Happy New Year. I'm, I'm very well, thank you. Yeah. All good? Yes. It's, uh, I mean, it's been an interesting start to the year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been a few weeks since we, uh, we last spoke, uh, and I must confess I am a bit sad. Wait for you to see how sad I am. Brexit finally happened. And the question is, how will you go to Spain in the summer? from now on <laughs> well, i'm not really sure i don't think we can go anywhere right now but um uh with the pandemic but yeah i mean it's it's thankfully it's it's over so um we i mean there's obviously there's still some devil in the detail it's a the 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 agreement is a is a sort of living document you know it can be changed it can be amended um but it basically gives sort of preference preferential status to the uk as a sort of uh preferred that it's it's it, the most aligned third third party third country to the EU. Um, it's a very close trading relationship, but there are obviously doubts about the financial services sector. There's not really been much clarity there, um, and there's already been a big shift in the in European equity trading has already shifted uh, to Amsterdam um, and Paris uh, chiefly, um, and it's not clear whether or not that's going to come back. Now that that's not really affecting jobs in the city of London as such, but it's certainly a, a sign that you know maybe some of the luster can be can be you know can be lost if you if you're not careful about these things. This would have been my uh, my next question. What is the situation in London right now uh, in terms of uh, Brexit, in terms of uh, the vaccine, in terms of uh, the lockdown? How is the situation in London? Well, I think London hospitals are, are starting to uh, become overwhelmed. But apart from that, you know, I think uh, the, the mood is quite optimistic. The FTSE had a good start to the year. Um, the, the market's up about 6% this year, so this week. Um, and we've seen some real big, big gains for the likes of BP, Shell. Um, HSBC was up 10% yesterday. Standard Chartered was up 10%. Wow. Um, wow. You know, really big gains for, for heavyweight stocks. Not the sort of moves that you see, that sort of high beta type moves. So um, really impressive start to the year. There's a lot of optimism about m and activity in, in the city. A lot of um, feeling that, you know, there's still a lot of deals to be done. Um, there's going to be some, you know, IPOs coming. So I think there's a lot of optimism in the city as ever, as it sort of looks ahead to, you know, nine months, twelve months out, rather than rather than sort of staring at it, at, at its feet. Talking about that, talking about the city, uh, check this out. Let's have a quick look at the pound. Uh, we see the pound trading very, very high as things stand right now at uh, one thirty six. And if it will break the one thirty six to the upside, the next stop is one forty two. What would take for the pound to to go that high? What would be a potential catalyst for the pound? I think if you got to um, say the end of February or mid February, end of February, early March, whatever it happens to be, and the vaccines are really kicked in and worked, um, or or that we can really clearly see that they're working, and that, you know that we are going to get get out of the the worst of it, or and you know move forward, then that's going to be a big thing. That will make a big difference to um to the pound um because you've got this you know underpinning it is the brexit deal so we don't have the tail risk there's no tail risk anymore about a no deal brexit so that's gone um i think if you're looking specifically at cable then obviously us dollar weakness is a key factor um i think we've seen the dollar weak as i think we talked about you know running down to 88 seems inevitable for the dollar index but um you know that dollar weakness story could 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 play out more quickly this year than than maybe anticipated. So we get a, a sort of weaker dollar week into Q1, um, and then maybe starts to to find a base maybe um, later on. So we need to see how quickly it weakens. Um, if it if it hits um, 
you know, if it starts to drop below 88, then obviously you start to, to think that, that that dollar weakness story continues. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see the dollar index sort of stabilize around um, the mid, you know, 88 and a half. And that, that, that would be where maybe you'd start to think, well, the euro is looking not, you know, the eurozone economy is still not great. The, there's still a lot of deflation. Um, the data yesterday showed Germany and deflation for the fourth straight month, I think. Um, so it's going to be tough, I think, for the for for Europe. It's going to be tougher for Europe. I think America's leading the way. Uh, but it's with tougher the for US. <laughs> Sorry. It's tougher for U.S. Europe might be hit hard. Um, UK might uh, might be hit hard. But man, what's happening in the U.S.? I have never seen something like this. Yeah, I mean politically, but uh, I think you know economically, the U.S. and the U.K. are uh, the, the advantage that that we might have over the over the eurozone is obviously um, easier coordination of fiscal and monetary response and the, um, which we've seen but also I think you know the vaccines if you look at the charts you know the UK and the US are um, leading the way if you exclude Israel and, and Bahrain which are relatively small and they're quite specific cases and they're, you know they're doing an exceptional job but among the big developed economies the US and UK are leading the way and France hasn't vaccinated anyone practically so uh, you know I think that that will make a difference come um say come the spring when um things start to pick up uh, and hopefully you know that hopefully we do see things pick up and it's not a, it's not a really slow slow grind and um, you'd like to see a bit of a you know really really strong summer for the economy and i think that sort of plays into you know the pound potentially rising to 140. yeah once uh once more people get uh get vaccine then the situation uh let's say gets towards you know, back to normal, then uh, there will be a fight for the economy. Now, the next hot topic of the year, yeah, apart from elections, Brexit and everything else, is the Bitcoin. What is your take on this incredible rally of the Bitcoin, Neil? What caused this amazing spike? Uh, well, probably, I mean, there's been lots of underlying currents and trends that go and fed into it. From PayPal last year, um, their decision to allow people to buy, sell, hold, various cryptos, Square, MicroStrategy, getting involved, they were buying Bitcoin. And obviously at the start of this year, you've had this um, a decision by the US regulator to allow settlement of Bitcoin, uh, that will make a difference. Um, you've got a lot of, I guess, excess liquidity that needs to find a home. Um, and I think that's important. You know, that's what, what we've seen with uh, across the across global markets and you know you're seeing institutional investors getting involved a lot a lot more yeah you know yeah. adding small small positions in bitcoin but you don't need you don't need much of a of an increase in allocation to bitcoin to really ramp up the price just because it's so small it's a very the problem is it's still very liquid um you saw i think last week um the price moved 10% when somebody sold, uh, I think, about 150 Bitcoin or something like that. It, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's still very um, illiquid. It's still held, you know, 20% of Bitcoin have been lost. But even more and held by a handful of people. It's still very liquid. Um, it's still very dangerous. I think um, you could be looking at a big, big sell-off in come the middle of this month. Um, there's... In, in, investigations into tether and, and that are ongoing in new york uh, the attorney general there that investigation could could throw up some things and i think january the 15th is the deadline for that so watch out for that one there could be um uh this this looks like it could be a bit of a front run of that move and that you know you don't know if there's maybe going to be a, a big big sell-off come come the middle of the that's what i'm afraid of this is exactly what i'm afraid of because there's one thing seeing a currency reaching the all-time high and settling a couple of grand higher let's say here we're somewhere in that region and there's another thing seeing this cryptocurrency matching the all times high and doubling in less than a month it's it's a bit too good to be true is this a good time to buy bitcoin neil from uh, from your point of view <laughs> i had uh, half a dozen wary. with the same I'd question very, I'd very wary. Wary. yeah no i'd be very 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 wary of it at these levels i think because you've got that sort of parabolic move and when, when you hit the top of a parabola like that it's, it's always dangerous we've seen it we saw it you know we've got a similar very it's, it looks very similar to that 2017 move um yeah. that happened i mean if you look at the, the you know there is an argument that can go higher from here because if you look at um based on past history if you look at the july 
17 to December 17 move. So that sort of swing low in July 17, um, when it's touched that um, moving average support, I think you've got there. It it, it moves about a thousand percent between those dates in about six months. It moves a thousand percent. The move from the last swing low um, back in 2020, that sort of put, touches this um, that red line. Um, yeah, under the main. Yeah, there. Uh, it's only up, I think, about 700 percent now uh, from that level. So, y- you know, you could say that, well, there's another 300, 300 percent in there. Um, but equally, you're you're very <laughs> you're looking very toppy at these levels. I don't know what to say. I don't even know what to think about it. I am afraid of the dump of the big correction. I am afraid this was a, a pump and dump, you know, in a way. I don't know what uh, what was it. Very, very difficult. And I'm super upset that uh, I didn't buy more Bitcoin when it was cheap. <laughs> <laughs> now, probably not as upset as the guy who sold. Um, what did he? He bought two pizzas with ten thousand Bitcoin. The very first transaction. <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. I would. <laughs> anyway. Now, how about the US dollar? We also what happened in the US in the last 24 hours. What should we expect from the US dollar this January? Any hints or we see tomorrow after the NFP? Yeah, I think you're looking at looking at data. I think um, the the dollar is obviously still in this downtrend. It's still the pattern is still the, the, the bias is still to the downside just because that's the that's the trend. Um, you've seen it recover a bit of ground since uh, around 1.30 yesterday afternoon UK time. I think that, I think it was roughly as the German inflation or deflation data go, yeah. came out. You saw a bit, a bit of recovery in the dollar and it, and it followed through and it's held, it's holding on, but not too bad. But I think, um, you know, you really need to see it recover. Um, you need to see some big recovery sort of to 90 first before you'd really be confident um, of that it's a sustained move higher. Um, I think that would be one of the sort of levels that I, that I would be looking at um, as a general sort of general round number target, if you like. Um, and then um, also looking at to see what um, what the Democrats are going to be doing over the next sort of two two to four weeks. I think you need to see to what extent um, the likes of AOC, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren take control of the Democrat machine in washington and in, in in the house in the house of representatives and the senate um because if they do that sort of more left-wing socialist kind of wing of the party gets a, a grip on 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 the policy levers then that's going to make a big difference to um to the way the market looks at the dollar and i think it will imply much much more treasury issuance much more fiscal expansion which all else being equal um, ought to um, ought to see the dollar weaken. True. Very very awkward beginning of the year, Neil. Things are way f- far from uh, from calming down. Uh, is mid term, long term trading out of the question still, or not? Well, no. I think you can still apply the same sort of strategies that you might. I mean, I did see a C- City Group today said that basically the top is in for the year. So maybe it's maybe it's uh, time to just pack up for the year, but. Um, there's, I think there's going to be a lot of volatility this year, probably more than maybe the market thinks, um, because I think you'll see disappointment um, around um, certain aspects of policy stimulus. You'll, if, if you, the problem is that as soon as you start to see, if you do see a big bounce back in the recovery and, and yields go higher, inflation comes through because there's so much pent up demand, and specifically in things like. Um, sectors of the economy where people are desperate to get going, like in the, in travel, say, um, where there just simply isn't enough supply to match the demand that there will be. Um, you know, you see inflation coming through, um, that, that'll that start to create some volatility, I think. But um, otherwise, I think, you know, the, 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 the broad backdrop is still pretty positive for, for stock markets. I'm with you. And what what should we keep an eye on, Neil? Uh, what do you reckon is the hottest or one of the hottest assets right now, apart from the Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and cryptos? <laughs> well, I would say um, <laughs> I would say the FTSE because I think there's probably a lot more for it to run. Um, I think the UK market's still very cheap versus peers. Um, you know, you've got the DAX trading at an all-time high, the Dow and the S&P trading at all-time highs, um, the Nasdaq's always massively. Uh, rich, um, even the Russell 2000 now is very rich. I think um, the FTSE is the one 
sort of corner of the market that still has to kind of flex and kind of has room has room in front of it um you know prairie prairie to to run in in front of it and i think um that is that is probably the market where you could potentially see the most sort of um at least you know large liquid index that i'm talking about here i mean there's obviously lots of interesting stock individual stocks and so on to look at but um yeah that would be the main the main market that i'd be looking at um i think also gold's interesting because i think um you've had a bit of a pullback to that 1900 dollar level um yes and it and it's got i think with the way although although u.s treasury yields nominal yields probably going to rise a bit this year um i would think that inflation expectations will rise further and faster um and that should support the tips market. And if the tips market is bid and supported, then that should help gold um, rally. So I think gold, and if you've seen the divergence between 10 year tips and gold lately, um, and I think gold's got to catch up with the tips market um, still. So I think, you know, you've got a run at 2000 probably on the cards before, um, before too long. Yeah, looking at the charts right now, this is the gold chart. Yeah, we can see the drop from left to right. Yeah, and after that uh, test, that retest below the 200 MA, we see an uptrend, more or less. Yeah, this looks yeah. like an uptrend. And so we a might nice, we'll look into a, a very nice clean break above the 50 day as well, which is, you know, usually quite a good. If you get a, a nice, confirmed, strong push above the 50 day, um, going back over the last couple of years, it's, 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 it's been a pretty good trade to be in, uh, to be long in, um, until until it falls back below the 50 day. Once it falls back below the 50 day in a sort of sustained, confirmed way, you know, I'm not talking about trading through it on the day, but a couple a couple of candles, really strong candles through it, um, then it's then it's been um, that that's been the time to get out and become short because that that trend has yeah. gone then lower. So. That 50 day line is certainly one to watch and we're still above that, I think, so still looking pretty positive. Yes, correct. All right. We keep an eye on that and we speak again on Monday to see where we are. I'm very curious about the NFP numbers tomorrow. A few minutes ago, half an hour ago, we had the uh, initial jobless claims coming out in green, way better than uh, that economists uh, have predicted, which makes me giggle a bit, to be honest, considering what happened in the in the States last month. But let's see the, the numbers tomorrow. What do you reckon, by the way, dollar for tomorrow, up or down? Dollar tomorrow... Um... I think probably do what whatever it's done today. It's gone up a bit today, so it's probably probably pull back tomorrow. I think we're chopping a bit. I think we're you know, just chopping in and out. So probably down tomorrow. Probably down from your side. I'm gonna say probably up from my side, and I'll meet you halfway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No. <laughs> yeah. Now, Neil Wilson, everyone. Neil, thank you ever so much for being with us today. It's been a pleasure. Congratulations. Right. And once again, we're very sorry to see you leaving. <laughs> How will you get <laughs> in the summer? This is the question. Or to Cyprus to, to get to uh, Cyprus. Well, uh, yeah. Well, I need my I need to renew my passport anyway. That's for sure. There we go. Nice new black, dark blue passports that we that we get now. The the third world country passport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like right. America. Okay. Yes, exactly. UK is an empire. Poor third world country. Anyway, uh, I'm glad that everything everything settled uh, from from the UK EU side of things when uh, when it comes to to Brexit, and they settled before the year end. I was expecting um, a rollover, to be honest. <laughs> Four years yeah, lucky of that, lucky that they did it in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is it. Neil, thank you ever so much. I'll, uh, I'll get back to you on Monday. I'm curious to see what's going to happen on uh, on Friday tomorrow with the NFP numbers. And let's see. So again, you say the USD down tomorrow, yeah? Yeah, why not? <laughs> and I'm going to say USD up. Should we bet on a bottle of wine? <laughs> Makes sense, yeah. <laughs> All right. You, you're going to have to pay customs, though, or not? Uh, okay. I'll pick it up next time I'm in Cyprus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anytime you want. Neil, thank you ever so much for being with us. Have a great weekend uh, yes. of you, and I'll talk to you on Monday. Neil Wilson, everyone. Right. I'll tell you what, we're coming back live in exactly 30 seconds, guys, with, uh, with the signals of the day. What do you say? Stay tuned. We're coming back live in 30 seconds. Discover how some of the top executives are trading their own companies with our insider trades tools. 
see who's been buying or selling stock and what their trades say about insider sentiment. Use this unique big data tool to make more informed stock trades. That's Higher Trading from MarketX. All right, guys, beautiful people, we are back with the signals of the day. We are already almost uh, half an hour, 25 minutes into the US trading session. Let's see how the analysts at investing.com see the, um, the currencies today. We're looking at the three red guys. We're looking at strong sell positions on the euro and the pound versus the US dollar this afternoon, with the daily remaining a strong buy, though. Uh, we saw a positive uh, market opening on the US dollar, USDJPY, and USDCHF are uh, are pushing higher uh, now we have four green on usd jpy and three green on uh, on usd chf three strong buy positions very very good uh, good buy positions the aussie dollar versus the us dollar has strong sell positions but the daily remains a strong buy guys uh the euro is supposed to strengthen uh, versus the pound we have two strong buy one sell and another strong buy on a daily chart so more uh, more green than red for euro gbp usd cad uh, on the other hand uh, three green for usd cad three strong buy positions the daily remains a strong sell though uh, so we're looking at a downtrend on the long term but uh, today uh, just like uh, neil wilson said a couple of minutes ago we might see the dollar pushing higher and who knows over the night or tomorrow it might uh, start uh, dropping again the kiwi dollar versus the us dollar again has uh, three strong sell positions euro jpy and euro chf four green guys four strong buy on the euro versus the japanese yen and the swiss franc uh and the pound guys the pound versus the japanese yen and the swiss franc on a five minute chart we're looking at strong sell on 15 minutes we're looking at buy on uh one hour charts we're looking at strong buy and the daily on the on the chf is neutral so a bit of caution guys a bit of caution is um is indicated let's have a quick look at uh is suggested sorry let's have a quick look at uh at commodities guys see what the analysts uh, think this afternoon we're looking at gold and silver in red guys this afternoon with three strong sell positions we're looking at copper with four green four uh, strong buy very good performance for copper crude oil wti guys we see strong sell positions although the daily remains a strong buy and the brent oil is neutral so think twice uh, yeah, if uh, if you want to follow uh, trading signals uh, on crude oil, yeah, on Brent oil, because they might just turn around. Yeah, so far we have the daily remaining a strong buy, but this is it. Apart from that, everything is neutral or a strong sell on crude oil uh, or Brent oil. Natural gas on a five-minute chart is neutral, and then we're looking at strong buy positions. But again, if, uh, if we see a neutral trading signal on a five-minute chart, we might see a correction. So all those uh, strong buy signals might turn into sell yeah if the downward movement continues and we're looking at the us wheat guys with uh, strong buy positions on three of the time frames very uh, interesting potential long positions for us wheat let's have a quick look at indices guys let's have a look at the uh, wall street indices see wow there we go this is what we like to see guys a lot of green a lot of green on the charts four green four most of the american indices here we're looking at uh, nasdaq 100 with four strong buy s p 500 four strong buy dow jones four strong buy the nasdaq four strong buy and the russell guys the russell the small cap 2000 again is showing us four strong buy positions very 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 good performance for uh for the us indices uh quick look at a couple of stocks before i let you go guys in case we have some uh, some stock traders uh, watching us we see four strong buy on exxon mobile uh, this uh, afternoon apple very shy this afternoon with a strong buy on a five minute chart followed by sell and strong sell uh we're looking for four of a kind guys yeah whenever you see four of a kind you know very likely that's the direction there you go jp morgan guys four strong buy for jp morgan for uh buy for chevron we're looking at intel again with uh, with four strong buy positions city group four strong buy positions once again bank of america goldman sachs walmart and alphabet yeah the x google whoa whoa okay so the stock market today is doing tremendously well guys at least as things stand right now in the us um the euro and the pound uh supposedly they are weakening this afternoon uh, versus the us dollar and the us dollar is um is strengthening versus its other peers this is the situation right now right guys it's been a long day thank you so much for being with us today for the first um the first live broadcast of 2021 we had neil wilson with us we had the amazing news uh, from uh, from instruct fx
Okay, once again, guys, InstructFX is providing free counseling, free education, free mentoring for anyone that's willing to learn how financial markets work. I have exactly 10 slots available for 10 lucky clients um, this month, and I will personally mentor them for two weeks up to a month. Okay, I can only take so much for you guys, only 10 people. Okay, and number three, guys, if any of you had a bad experience or had a good experience with Forex trading, with trading stocks, with trading commodities, feel free to contact us. Join us live, guys. Tell the whole, the, the whole world your story. We're going to try and help you as much as we can. Right, this is it from my side uh, today, guys. Join me again tomorrow, same time, same place. By the way, in the in 2021, guys, starting uh, January, we are not doing the uh, European opening anymore. We're going to start the broadcast in the afternoon at 4 o'clock uh, GMT plus 2 or 2 o'clock London time. Okay, half an hour uh, prior the uh, US markets open. Okay, and we will continue after that. Yeah, let's see how it goes. Uh, we're going to keep this, uh, this schedule for January and February. Okay, and I have another big surprise for you in February. We're gonna have a, a remake of the studio. We're gonna we're gonna change uh, things around a bit. It's gonna be amazing. Right, guys, leave me alone. I gotta go home. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today. Happy New Year once again. Um, Merry Christmas for our Russian friends. Until tomorrow, guys. Remember to trade responsibly, and may all your trades be in the money. Have a nice day.